Hello, my name is Tierra Sargent and I am a student with the NABJ Student Project for the PR team. Today I have Nina Turner with me. We are fellow Ohioans. Yes, we are. And we're from Cleveland, the best city in America. Amen. <laughs> so recently you did an article with BuzzFeed calling the Democratic National Convention arrogant and much more. Can you tell us why? Well, a lot has happened, you know, uh, in this political environment, but really starting with last year. And, and in many ways, I, I feel as though, not just I, I travel all over the country, and a lot of people are expressing a concern and a disconnect with the Democratic Party that it doesn't really listen, listen, not tell people what to think or how to feel, but really listen to the needs of the people. And if the Democratic Party hopes to win elections this year, in 2018 and you know with an eye towards 2020 we have got to as a party start to listen to people and not tell them how they should think and how they should feel but really listen to their real concerns and be the type of party that you know president FDR pushed for be the type of party that congresswoman Shirley Chisholm pushed mm -hmm. for be the type of party that Fannie Lou Hamer challenged mm -hmm. you know when she she and others created the, the Mississippi Freedom Party mm -hmm. that really pressed against establishment yeah. politicians. Mm -hmm. So it really is a challenge to the Democratic Party to one, hear the cries of the people, and two, when we do have the power to stand up for the people in a way that changes their lives. So where do you see the Democratic Party going into 2020? Well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure. I mm -hmm. mean, so far, you know, I have not seen, you know, anything that says to me that the Democratic Party is really ready to shake this thing up. We we cannot underestimate President Trump. Nobody thought that he would win in 2016. Mm -hmm. There's no guarantee that he won't win election in 2020. But what I can say is this, is that if we as a party don't start to speak to the hearts and the minds of the people, stop alienating the millennials, stop alienating independent voters that lean Democrat, Stop only talking to folks when you want them to vote. I mean, how does that make voters feel that they only have interactions with people who serve in political office only when it's time for them to vote and to be bold in their positions? For example, for me as president of our revolution, we have a people's platform. And Tierra, every single one of those bills that we highlight in our platform, mm -hmm. there are eight of them. One is Medicare for all. You know, the other one is making sure that women have access to, you know, to abortion because that is a medical procedure. Fifteen dollar uh, hour minimum wage. You name it. We have eight pieces dealing with the environment, criminal justice. Those are all pieces of legislation that Democrats introduced in the House of Representatives. Mm -hmm. And what we did, we delivered uh, one one hundred thousand petitions to mm -hmm. the DNC to say that we want to see the DNC and all members of the House of Representatives who are Democrats yeah. to sign on to these bills. And these bills represent the people's yeah. platform. Mm -hmm. Folks are looking for bold leadership. They're mm -hmm. tired of being, you know, as, as Janet, uh, Madam Janet and Jackson said, what have you done for me lately? Yeah. You know, they really want to know that when they give us, people who are blessed to be elected, the power yeah. that we're gonna be bold. Yeah. And and that's the that's the line I come from. I am a Shirley Chisholm Bernie Crat. Okay, mm -hmm. unbought, unbought and unbossed. Yeah. And that makes some people feel uncomfortable as yeah. a black woman. You know, it's hard it, because you when you have those forces coming against you, but I believe that God has placed me here for a time such as this. And one of my favorite sheroes, Mother Jones, you know, she she once said, I will pray for the dead and fight like hell for the living. Yeah. And that's how I roll. Good. Yeah. So you are for the people, clearly. Clearly. So many of your supporters were hoping that you would run for political office this past year. Can yes. you tell us why not? Why Why don't we see you running? I did. So many of my supporters on here, for us being Buckeyes, I do want yeah. to give a shout out to all of the people in Ohio and also nationally who really wanted to see me run for yeah. governor yes. in 2018. Mm -hmm. I really appreciate them. I'm humbled by them. But when the opportunity to become the president of our revolution, I had the way, do I yeah. run for governor or take on this task? Yeah. And I am taking on this task, not just for our fellow Buckeyes, but yeah. I'm taking on this task for all of America. Yeah. And I do really believe that when everyday people put a little extra on their ordinary, extraordinary mm -hmm. things begin to happen, yeah. and I want to use this cachet that I have, the belief that people, many people have in me, to really push this nation forward, yeah. which is why I took on this took on being yeah. the president. Okay. So yeah, I want their support in my efforts to do this. Yes, and I'm sure you're gaining that support. I am. So we talked about your 
your current position. So can you tell us how a young professional like myself can make sure that we are accurately depicting our communities and making sure that those stories that you are hearing uh, while you're traveling are covered in the media? Well, to get involved like you and your colleagues are right mm -hmm. now, I'm so excited about the program that you and, and others that are not on camera right now are participating mm -hmm. in. Your voice matters. You know, the millennial generation and the millennial, you know, not from, from 18 to 35, mm -hmm. millennial, largest generation and the most diverse generation yes. in our country's history. Mm -hmm. So your generation gives me so much hope. Yes. Your generation gave, you were the win beneath the wings for Senator Bernie Sanders. Yeah. I mean, if 2016, if only millennials voted, if yeah. only your votes mattered, yeah. he, he would be the president of the United States yeah. right now. And why is that important? It is important because I see through your generation the type of world, the type of America that you want to create, which yeah. is one that is equitable, one that is fair, one that is authentic. Yeah. And it gives me so much hope. So I want to say to the millennial generation, Never let anybody make you feel like your voice does not matter. Mm -hmm. Don't cede territory to anybody. Mm -hmm. Listen to more seasoned people because I think together it was that song Glory yes. that you know John yeah. Legend mm -hmm. in common. But there's a parallel in there where they talk about you need the energy of the youth, but you also need the wisdom of the elders. Yes. That it all goes mm -hmm. together. Yes. That there's always a generation before you and there's always a generation behind you. Yes. But we can learn from one another. Mm -hmm. But the millennial generation gives me so much hope about the future of this country and in the world but get involved but know your purpose yeah you know James Baldwin once said know from which you came mm -hmm. know from which you came there's virtually nowhere that you can not go yeah so you got to know your purpose to live a purpose-driven life and that it should matter that you're in the room mm -hmm. you know when we think about the freedom riders yeah mm -hmm. or you think about them young people that sat at those at, at, you know at the counters those lunch counters mm -hmm. in North Carolina those were not 30 year olds, even though 30 is still young. Yeah. But those were 20 year olds, those were college students, those Definitely. freedom riders were young folks mm -hmm. shaking the world yes. for good. Mm -hmm. And so I wanna say to the millennial generation, baby, shake the world Thank you. for good. Thank you, and thank you for encouraging us. So I'm sure that other millennials want to uh, engage in conversations with you. So how can they follow you on social media? Oh my God, millennial, because you keep me young. My son is a millennial, so I got to stay hip, you know? I told my son, he got it, Tierra, I told my son I need some other rappers to quote other than Tupac, you know, who was the ultimate urban poet, I must say. I quoted Tupac on the floor of the Senate, Tierra. I quoted my grandma, Tupac, and MLK, let me wow. tell you. But, um, but yeah, follow me on Twitter, at Nina Turner. I can be reached on Instagram, uh, Nina Turner, Ohio, and on Facebook, Nina Turner. And please, I want to encourage the millennials to sign up for Our Revolution. Go to ourrevolution.com. Mm -hmm. We need you. And if nobody else makes you feel as though you're needed, trust and believe. Our Revolution, you're hearing it from me, the president, that Our Revolution needs you. Ourrevolution.com. Thank you. Well, thank, thank you, you for talking with me today. Thank you.